comes to making an investment. Land, cost of land, water, manpower, power, electricity, and everything else that is required, fiscal incentives. All of these are in the domain of the state. So I tell a lot of my friends, you know, when I meet them, potential investors, about this old story uh, that is narrated in Indian uh, mythology. You know, there was once upon a time an elephant and eight blind men around it. All these blind men wanted to experience and understand what an elef elephant actually looks like because they have never seen or they have never been able to feel one in their life. So they were all taken to a zoological park. And this is an elephant. They were all, you know, positioned at various points around the elephant in the room, in, in the zoo, in the den. Each of them felt one thing. One felt the trunk, another one felt the legs, another one felt the humongous body, another gentleman felt the tail, somebody else felt something else, but each of them, after the experience, were asked, so how was it? One said, you know, it's humongous. Another said, no, it's not. It's actually very slender, very long, very hairy, if I may say so. So each of them had a very different experience of the elephant. Same is the case with India. It all depends on which gateway you choose to enter India. Because, you know, your experience of India will hinge, will depend, will be predicated on which gateway you choose to enter India through. If you enter India through Hyderabad and Telangana, your experience will be very different than when you enter through, say, Uttar Pradesh. It's a very different experience because we work very differently. Our cultures are very different. Our thinking is very different. Some states are more progressive. Some states are more advanced. Some states are more adept at change. The point I'm trying to make, ladies and gentlemen, I know the story was a little longer than anticipated possibly, but the point I'm trying to make is, please choose your gateway wisely when you're investing in India. Because your experience, your memory or your opinion of India will actually hinge on the gateway you choose to invest through. Having said that, two years ago, Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji had invited all of us to Delhi to talk about what we need to do to make India truly a first world country over the course of next 25 to 50 years. And from the government of Telangana, from my political party here, I represented the state of Telangana. Now, I had only told him three things. I said, sir, if we really have to ensure India becomes a first world nation, then we have to buy, subscribe, and adhere to the three I mantra. What are the three I's? The first I stands for innovation. The second I is infrastructure. The third I is inclusive growth. These three I's together will propel India truly into the orbit of growing nations, into the orbit of the first world countries. Now, before, before I elaborate further on the three I's, let me just quickly give you a snapshot of what my state has achieved over the last eight years. Telangana is the youngest state in India. For those of you who are unfamiliar as to why this is the youngest state in India, the constitution of India allows for the formation of new provinces, for the formation of new states, unlike some other countries. So as a result of a protracted struggle for decades, the state of Telangana came into being on the 2nd of June, 2014. The capital city is Hyderabad, which is the fifth largest city in India and one of the fastest growing cities in India. The geography, if you look at uh, the geographical size of Telangana, we are 12th largest in terms of geogra geographical size among 28 Indian states. But if you look at population, we're 11th largest state in India. So by no means are we a small state. We are a mid-sized state. Now, what has Telangana done in the last eight years which is remarkable? What makes it special among Indian states? The numbers will speak for themselves. The GSDP of Telangana, the Gross State Domestic Product of Telangana, when the state was formed, was 5,6,000 crores. I don't know in dollar terms, I can't 
uh, I can't give you an exact number right now, but just to give you a percentage, I can. I can. And about as of March 31st this year, the GSDP of Telangana is 11.55 lakh crores, almost 130% increase. The per capita income of Telangana was 1.24 lakh rupees back in 2014. As of March 31st this year, it is 2.8 lakh rupees. Just to give you a comparison, the average per capita of India as a nation is 1.49 lakh rupees. Telangana is almost double the per capita of India, the rest of national average. If you look at the expansion of agriculture in Telangana, because of the fact that we have taken it upon ourselves to construct some of the largest projects in the world. In fact, we have constructed in a very short span of time, about four years, the world's largest lift irrigation project in our uh, state. That is the result why you see the irrigated land also has expanded from 62.5 lakh acres in 2014 to almost 1.36 crores or 136.9 lakh acres, which is almost double or even more in fact. Uh, right now, it's 119% to be precise. The IT exports of Telangana back in 2014-15 were at 66,000 crores. And now, they've risen by almost 248% to 1,83,000 crore. The installed power capacity of Telangana was about 9,470 megawatts, which now has almost doubled to 17,218 megawatts. These are, the some, these are some of the numbers. I'll get a bit deeper into it when we actually go into a discussion. We have grown in all sectors, the primary sector, the secondary sector, the tertiary sector. The primary sector as, you know, agriculture, we have grown at 9.1% in 2001, 2000, to, so 2021-22. And the contribution has risen also from, by, from the agriculture sector from a mere 14% to 18.6%. My director of food processing is here, Jayesh is of course here. Telangana is now, in fact, ushering in five different kinds of revolutions as we speak. Of course, green revolution because you know the agriculture has expanded by 119%. We see immense production of paddy, cotton and a number of other agricultural produce that is ushering in green revolution. We are, in fact, a land of 46,000 lakes and tanks. And therefore, government of Telangana has taken it as a challenge, as a priority, to encourage inland fisheries. And government of India has recognized us as a top state in inland fisheries, and which is ushering in a blue revolution. In fact, now we are at a stage, because of the newly built reservoirs and because of the rejuvenated tanks and lakes, we are at a stage where we can export fishes and prawns and uh, you know shrimp from Telangana to United States and to Europe as well. We are also witnessing a strong white revolution. We have become one of the strongest states in dairy sector as well because of government's focus and additional incentives that are being given to the dairy farmers. We are also in fact ushering in a pink revolution in meat processing because in Telangana livestock development has been taken as a task as well to improve rural livelihoods. As a result, the livestock in fact has doubled in Telangana, especially sheep has doubled in Telangana over the last five years. And Telangana also wants to ensure that the country does not remain dependent on imports for edible oil from Malaysia, from Indonesia. So therefore, we have started encouraging oil palm in a big way. Our target is ambitious, 20 lakh acres of oil palm cultivation over the next five years. And that will usher in, we believe, a yellow revolution, which will also help the rest of the nation. In terms of industrial growth, we are one of the most progressive, most dynamic, and most forward-thinking state in the country. Our growth rate is by far, you know, the highest in the country at 20.2%. And the contribution of the industries sector is almost 29%, 28.6 to be precise. Those of you who do not know, or those of you who possibly are not aware, since we are not yet fully out of the pandemic, let me share with you. I don't know how many of you know this, 
Telangana is home to one third of global vaccine supply. We are the city where one third of global vaccines are produced. I'm not talking India, I'm talking globe. Because, you know, even COVID vaccines that came from India, the two COVID vaccines that are indigenous have both come from Telangana. Serum Institute, of course, was manufacturing for AstraZeneca. So I don't count that as an indigenous vaccine. The two vaccines, Covaxin and Corbivax, both of them came from Hyderabad. To be precise, 9 billion doses of vaccine are produced per annum from Telangana. So that gives you a sense of what is, what is going to happen. And recently, in fact, uh, because of the Quad program, one of the large companies here called Biological Evans has signed up a deal and they are expanding, which will take our vaccine production to almost 50% of the globe from one single state, and that is Telangana. Let me also give you another example about our strength in life sciences. The largest number of US FDA approved manufacturing facilities for any single province in the world are in Telangana. The second largest is in New Jersey and the United States. The largest number of US FDA approved manufacturing facilities uh, in pharmaceutical production are in Telangana. More than 250 such units exist in Telangana. That makes us the pharmaceutical capital of India, the life sciences hub of India, and of course, one of the most important life sciences nodes in the world as well. And we are, of course, growing it. I'll talk a bit about it later. We are also a powerhouse in aerospace and defense. I don't know, again, how many of you know this, but President Joe Biden's helicopter cabin is also made in Telangana. In fact, Sikorsky is the company which manufactures it. They manufacture in a joint venture with Tata's, Tata Advanced Aerosystems Limited, and they manufacture it out of Telangana as well. And there's plenty of other things that are also going on. And I can even arrange for a tour so that you can get a look at some of the engines, the LEAP engines that are being manufactured, some of the world-class uh, fighter jet uh, empanages that are manufactured, some of the fuselage that is manufactured for helicopters such as Apache, all made in Telangana, all coming out of the city of Hyderabad. We are also a very, very strong player in electronics and IT. I'll talk about IT in a bit. Electronics as well. Today, 25% of the television sets that are produced in India come from Telangana. We are a very strong, we have a very strong presence in electronics, but of course our ambition is larger. We want to be the Shenzhen of India. We want to ensure that Hyderabad becomes the hub for electronics in India, and we are making a lot of efforts in that direction. My director, Semiconductors and Electronics, is also here. He will be more than happy to share more details with you. Of course, we talked a bit about all the revolutions that are sweeping, you know, as a result of agricultural expansion, which naturally, consequentially, lands in food processing and processed food production. And Telangana, in fact, is the only state in India which has taken upon itself to set up what is called as special food processing zones of the state of Telangana. TSSFZ. Now, these special food processing zones are spread across different districts, spread across 10,000 acres of land, and are readily available for anybody who would want to come and invest in my state. The services sector, of course, has also been growing. I'll talk about it in a bit. Of, in a bit. Why did agriculture expand? I would say because of the initiatives of the government in terms of investments into irrigation, in terms of investments into, uh, you know, welfare schemes such as Raitu Bandhu, which is a direct benefit transfer uh, into farm input to the millions of farmers, ensuring the farmers one of its kind in the world. The state directly insures every single farmer to the tune of almost 5 lakh rupees in case of a natural death as well. And of course, because of a very strong food processing policy, the sector has been growing. I can go on, but I think we'll move on. Uh, next slide, please. We are, in fact, uh, a powerhouse in information technology. We are home to more than 1,500 plus multinational companies. Just to give you a sense of uh, what it is that I'm talking about, if you look at the brand names there, Google, 
Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, and Meta. All of their second largest campuses in the world, anywhere in the world, outside of their headquarters, are here in the city of Hyderabad. In fact, let me share with you, Amazon's world's largest campus is not in Seattle. It is in Hyderabad. And all of this has happened over the period of last eight years. Except Microsoft, which set shop in 2001, the rest of the companies that you see here, all of them have come in the last eight years. Not only these, Uber, Salesforce, Micron, Qualcomm, ServiceNow, Novartis, all of these companies, their second largest base in the world, is in my city, Hyderabad. In case you're thinking, are these BPO, KPO kind of operations? No. Some of the most cutting edge work in maps, in AR, VR, AI, ML, happens outside of Hyderabad. In fact, I'm sure all of you use Google Maps. Google Maps are actually developed in Hyderabad. So just to give you a sense of what's going on, the number of jobs that were created in the information technology industry last year in India, altogether in India, the country, was about 4,55,000, 455,000, out of which my city Hyderabad alone had 150,000 plus. So more than one third of the jobs that were created in the IT sector last year in the middle of the pandemic were in Hyderabad, not in Bangalore. Bangalore was at 1,48,000. So we have been able to also give Bangalore a run for its money over the last few years. Of course, we have a lot of catching up to do, but we are on the right track is what I would like to believe. As I was saying, we are the nucleus of life sciences. We are a pioneer in aerospace and defense, and we are also an extremely important hub in electronics and semiconductors. So why Telangana? Why should anybody look at us? When I said innovation, infrastructure, and inclusive growth, that is not mere lip service. We take our words very seriously. We have innovated not just in terms of creating an infrastructure like T-Hub, which is the world's largest technology incubator. We have also innovated in our policy making. That's why Telangana today, you know, because of a new legislation called as the TSI Pass, which stands for the Telangana State Industrial Project Approval Self-Certification System, like the Easy Pass in the US, which you, you know, uh, navigate through easily. We have created a similar facility here and we have conferred upon the investor, the prospective investor, a right to self-certify themselves. You may have heard of right to information. You may have also heard of right to education. But in Telangana, we have conferred upon the investors a right to self-certify themselves. Now, what do I mean? What I mean is, if you are an investor, a foreign or Indian, doesn't matter, you have a piece of land and you want to start construction, you actually do not need any clearance from government of Telangana. You don't need a permission from the municipality. You don't need a permission from the Gram Panchayat. No permission needed. And this is backed by legislation. You can hit the ground running. You can start construction of your factory on day one. Only for regulatory purposes, we request that you submit an application online on the TSI Pass portal because we need to know who's doing business in my state. You know, we need to know what kind of employment is being generated, what kind of taxes we are likely to accrue, and what kind of sector you're investing in. Once we receive your application in the TSI Pass portal, my efficient team will ensure that irrespective of how many departments have to clear your proposal, it could be 30, it could be 35 sometimes, all clearances by statute, by legislation, will be conferred within 15 days. You can say that, okay, I've heard this before. You can, of course, say with a bit of cynicism, I've heard this before. Every state I go to, they give me the same thing. How are you different? We are different because if we don't deliver on the 15-day window, on the 16th day, it's a deemed approval. It's an approval by default backed by legislation. Even the government cannot contest it. And from 16th day, let me also tell you, my most efficient principal secretary, Jayesh Ranjan, my special secretary, Vishnu Vardhan Reddy, two top-notch bureaucrats, even they are not exempt 
from a penalty of rupees 1,000 per day if they are held responsible for holding up a clearance. Of course, Jayesh and Vishnu have not yet been penalized because they are super efficient. In case you're wondering, well, this sounds too good to be true, does it actually work in reality? In the last seven and a half years since we passed this legislation in 2014 on the 5th of November, we have given more than 20,000 clearances. We have been able to raise more than 2.4 crore investment, lakh crore investment, which roughly translates to, I think, what is the dollar value now? 80 rupees, is it? So I think it would roughly translate to about $30 billion. And it, we've created a direct job potential of more than 1.6 million jobs. That's why we are ranked right on the top on the ease of doing business rankings given by Government of India. We've consistently been in the top three. We missed by a whisker last time, otherwise we would have been on number one. And let me also add the one thing I had that's important. I know that in today's world, the competition to attract investment is not among Indian states alone. When an investor is looking at making an investment, he's mulling options, he's weighing options, he's looking at various geographies. Sometimes the competition is between Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam, and India. Sometimes it could be Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, India. It could be some, something else, other, other geographies. So therefore, we have a very unique policy in Telangana where if you, as a prospective investor, is willing to share with me what my competition has offered to you in terms of fiscal incentives, we will either meet or beat that offer. And this is again backed by legislation. This is backed by uh, the statute, which makes it extremely attractive for anybody to start looking at. Next slide, please. So these are all the, inf these are all the in entities that we have created over the last eight years. T-Hub, where we are sitting, is in fact the largest technology incubator in the world. And what do I mean, technology incubator? Say, so for instance, yesterday, I'll not name names, but a large American company, a large sports and you know, uh, apparel manufacturer, they had met me yesterday. They asked me, they said, if I want to run an innovation challenge, because you know, I'm new to India, I have an office in Bangalore, but I'm new to India, uh, you know, the various other geographies in India. So can you help me find some good startups? What T-Hub can do for you is run a corporate innovation program where we will invite startups from all over India. They will look at your pain points, the problems with a fresh set of eyes, with an objective outside of you, and we'll come out with some truly global, truly world-class solutions. Because young Indians are bright. Young India has an aspirational value that is truly global in nature. That is what we want to do through T-Hub, create a platform for young India to come, innovate, and to offer solutions to the rest of the world as well. We've also created what is called as the Telangana State Innovation Cell, TSIC. What is it? TSIC is basically ensuring that the inclusive growth piece that I talked about, the T-Hub in Hyderabad should not be the only focus because you know, uh, uh, the urban-rural divide in India is something that we all lament about. We wanted to use TSIC, the Telangana State Innovation Cell, to reach every nook and corner of Telangana, to reach out to the rural entrepreneurs, to reach out to the social entrepreneurs, to reach out to entrepreneurs cutting across ages, young, old, middle-aged, like me, whatever, but ensure that innovation, wherever it is, they're also given an opportunity. We've also created VHUB, one of its kind in India, the Women Entrepreneurs Hub, and uh, for those of you who have had, not had a chance to visit VHUB, I urge you also to pay a visit. It's right across the lake and a beautiful facility. The CEO is here, Deepti, somewhere. So this is, again, to support women entrepreneurs to ensure that their dreams are given enough uh, in terms of tailwinds and in terms of support. T-Works is India's largest prototyping facility. In fact, we will be unveiling it. It's right across... In fact, the hub facility, you can see it from the windows here. It is to promote and nurture a culture of manufacturing, culture of prototyping. And it is India's only and largest, of course, prototyping facility. A lot of times in India, you'll see the academic institutions doing wonderful work, the CSIR labs. But 
most of the work that happens is not relevant in the real world. So to bring about a coordination between industry, what the market is thinking, and what is happening in the academic world, we have created an institution called as RICH, the Research and Innovation Circle of Hyderabad. It is to ensure we take care of the IP that is generated. It is to ensure that the research that happens is in orientation with the market, market alignment. The last institution, which is, I think, most important, task, the Telangana Academy for Skills and Knowledge. Anyone who wants to start an enterprise in India will need skilled manpower. In Telangana, we do it differently. Say, for instance, if a Korean firm is wanting to come and invest in Telangana, if you're willing to share with me what are the skill sets that you're looking at, you know, in terms of your employees, say you're willing to engage 500 people. For example, Hyundai has a huge R&D center here, about 1,000 people work there. And if Hyundai is looking to expand, let's take it as an example. If Hyundai is giving me the details of the workforce that they are wanting in terms of skills, we will train a task at our cost, 1,000 people if you're looking for 500. You can then cherry pick the best 500 and make sure that they join your team. What is in it for me? The local youth getting employment is the objective of the government of Telangana. Next slide, please. Um, we are one of the leading startup hubs in India. Of course, we are competing with Bangalore, we are competing with other cities, but we are growing and growing fast. We already have a few unicorns as well from Telangana, but there are plenty of sunicorns is what I would like to believe. Soon to be unicorns is what I would like to believe. We are, in fact, next slide, a powerhouse of talent. We have a number of wonderful world-class institutions, academic institutions. The Indian School of Business is rated as one among the best in the world. The IIIT Hyderabad, IIT Hyderabad, Nalsar, ICRISAT, TIFR, and all these wonderful institutions that you see here are all headquartered in Hyderabad. And they continue to provide a number of other engineering colleges, of course, and medical colleges, of course, continue to provide the much needed workforce. But let me also tell you, add one more thing here. It is not just about what institutions are headquartered in Telangana. If you're looking to set up base in Hyderabad, in Telangana, we have the ability, because Hyderabad is where, I keep saying this and I can't say this enough, Hyderabad is neither south of India nor north of India. We are where the North India meets South India. We are where, I think, the old world heritage and culture meets the new age vibrancy. We are a city where it's a veritable melting pot of culture. So we have the ability to assimilate people from all over the world, all over India, and attract the best talent from across the country as well. Hyderabad, of course, has been growing and growing rapidly. In fact, an agency called as Mercer, which rates cities on livability index, has rated for five years in a row, from 2015 until 19. And since then, they have suspended their rankings because of COVID. Five years in a row, we've been rated as a city with the best quality of living among all Indian cities. So for those of you who are from Delhi, Bangalore, Chennai, I think time to pack your bags and move to Hyderabad, is what I'm saying. Let me also add, you know, that Hyderabad has been rated as a city which is dynamic by JLL on the Global City Momentum Index. We've been ranked fifth, first, second, and first. And these are world rankings, not Indian city rankings. These are, these are rankings given by JLL in the US. And of course, like I said, we are shielded. We are geographically bang in the middle of the country, extremely well connected to the rest of the world. We are one hop from any part of the world. And more importantly, we are shielded from all natural forces. Uh, you know, we are not we're not prone to earthquakes because seismologically we are in one of the most stable locations in the world. We are not close to any ocean, so no tsunamis, no cyclones. And uh, of course, the cost of living, like I said, and the quality of living is much better than many other uh, Indian cities. And the last two, two or three slides I'll dwell on quickly. So what is it that I'm trying to propose to you? Of course, we, lo we are looking for collaborations on multiple fronts, in education, we want to associate with the best in the world. ISB I talked about is a culmination of the result between Wharton and a number of other United States universities and schools. Likewise, we recently entered into a memorandum of understanding with King's College for Hyderabad Pharma City to set up a life sciences university. 
We have we have also entered into an MOU with Deakin of Australia for a national center for additive manufacturing. We also have entered into an MOU with uh, you know, uh, Thailand for trade relations, the first state in India, in fact. We've also entered into an MOU with Bolivia to supply lithium so that uh, you know, we can encourage more and more of electric vehicles and lithium ion cell manufacturing and battery manufacturing as well. And we are the only state that has done this. We also are looking to, of course, engage in trade and investment opportunities. We're looking at partnerships with various industry bodies across the world, such as USIBC, UKIBC, etc. We, of course, continue to work with institutions like JICA, etc. So, all in all, I think uh, in, in the little time that was given, I think uh, I hope I've been able to convey a sense of who we are, what we do, and what we're looking for. I thank you once again, all of you, for this, uh, you know, for the time you have taken out of your busy schedules and have uh, chosen to join us here. Thank you very much. And any questions, any comments, I'm happy to address and I'm happy to take. Thank you.